Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Honor him and bless him. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We give you all the praise, all glory, all honor, and all adoration. You deserve it, and we return our praise to you. We return our glory to you. Thank you, Father. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you. Come on, lift your hands and be truly grateful. Oh, what a joy that God has set you where his word comes in season, where his counsel is not scarce. You know what to do by the Spirit. Come on, go ahead and bless him. Honor his holy name. We give you praise. We bless you, Father. And we thank you. You deserve all glory. You deserve all praise. You deserve all adoration. We bless you. Thank you, Father. Oh, just one more minute. Just bless him. Just bless him. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. There is none like you. Oh, we bless you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. Come on, go ahead and bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we give you praise. Tonight, you will speak to us in a way that only you can. We submit our heart to you. Speak to us, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Amen. You may please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, turn your Bibles with me. Thank you, Streams of Life. Let me give them a big hand. Thank you. Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number one. Genesis, chapter number one. We start the reading from verse 26. I'd like for the media to project that Genesis 1 from verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have what? Dominion. Let them have what? Come on, say that loud. Let them have what? Let them have what? Dominion. Over the fish of the sea, I would prefer that for the sake of understanding, you pay attention to the sea, the land, and the air. Not the fish, the cattle. <laughs> Do you understand that? Uh -huh. Pay attention to the domain. Is that okay now? If you pay attention to the domain, you will not accept this scripture like a farmer. 
Because you just think that, oh, so the reason why we can tame a dog is because God has given dominion over a dog. What are you talking about? All right, these creatures were called out as examples of creatures in those domains. Are you following me at all? All right? So let them have dominion over the sea and over the hair and over the earth. You see that? <laughs> and every creeping thing that creeps upon the head. Yes, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So both male and female have the responsibility of dominion. It is not for the male alone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. It is not for the male alone. All right, both male and female have the word. And go and check any organization, any system that women are marginalized. They don't thrive. They don't thrive. Because they are, they are rebelling against the order. What is the order? Male and female created he them. Are you seeing that now? Somebody say male and female created he them. Now, verse 28. And God blessed them. So the blessing is the release from God that makes dominion possible. You cannot walk in dominion if you are not walking in the blessing. Are you following what I'm saying here? Is this simple enough? Uh -huh. You cannot walk in dominion if you are not walking in the blessing. Now, let's, let's first demystify something, okay? Lift your right hand, everyone. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it again. I'm blessed. Now, hold on. Is it possible for a man to be blessed and broke? Huh? Answer. Is it possible? Is it possible? You've got to answer. <laughs> answer. Where am I, ISM graduate? Is it possible? <laughs> All right, you defend your project tonight. <laughs> All right, answer, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Because financial prosperity or material prosperity is an aspect of the blessing. So it is very possible that you walk in the rest and not walk in that. Are you following what I'm saying here? So what I'm going to teach you tonight, you will catch up. <laughs> you know, I like to announce the way my meeting will end. By the time this meeting is over, <laughs> you will get home. You will sit down and say, hold on, what happened to me in church today? <laughs> Are you following me? So just watch me <laughs> as we start like this. That's how we always start. <laughs> All right. Say it again, I'm blessed. You see, you might see that statement and there is no naira or dollars in your account to testify to that. Are you following what I'm saying here? Say loud and clear, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Say it again, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I, have I have all that pertains to life pertains and, godliness. and godliness. I can never be stranded. Never be stranded. Amen. See, that's my, that's my reality. Yeah. When I do anything, it spreads. Nothing dies in my hands. Amen. Now, there's this book by um, Daddy Hagen titled The Midas Touch. You see, it's a story. One of these Greek stories and all that. It just... Um, simply means that when you touch anything, it becomes gold. See, I have the Midas touch. Amen. See, all the remaining loopholes for you to begin to walk in this essentially, that's what we want to block tonight. So that <laughs> there's no loophole. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's no what? No loophole. Say it again, I'm blessed. 
Is there anyone who is sitting here that is broke? You see, <laughs> you are not conscious. Said I'm blessed. There might be no money to attest to it yet. Being broke is a state. But largely of the mind. Yeah. Largely. Okay, but let me ask that question. Is there anyone who is broke here? <laughs> you have decided not to repent. <laughs> and not to take what I'm saying. <laughs> because, you see, the reason why I ask that question, actually, God can lay my heart to bless someone. And I know you know it. Uh -huh. In fact, I came for this meeting ready for God to say that. But listen, one way not to walk in abundance is to take your eyes off God as the source. That's one way. The moment you take your eyes off God as the source, that's it. You'll be stranded. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I can bless you with a token, but um, only God can make you prosperous. See, even if I give you 10 million naira, I have not made you prosperous. Because prosperity is largely part of the blessing. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So, the release of God for man to have dominion, to walk in dominion, all right, is what the blessing. Somebody say the blessing. That's what God released. <laughs> For man to walk in dominion. Amen. Now, the blessing is invisible, intangible, but the effect is visible and tangible. So, for instance, all right, um, Pastor Jacob, come. If I go on your knees, if I lay hands on him and I say to him from today, and maybe that's a reality. It depends on your state of mind. Uh -huh. It depends. Every example can be a reality. All right? And the word comes from today. Receive the grace to wield influence. You see, the man who knelt down and the man who is getting up, are you following what I'm saying? They are two different men. But listen, if the consciousness does not affirm that, the man who knelt down is the man who is getting up. All right? Just like when you got married, you didn't grow four nose. It's the same you. The blessing is a consciousness of God's involvement in your life to make you happy, enviable, prosperous. And established. Are you following what I'm saying here? Uh -huh. From the day it comes upon your life, you must retain the awareness that this is it. Now, have you seen people who share testimonies that they have not been sick for a year? And the same week after sharing that testimony, they become sick. All right? What is happening? The devil is trying to check their debt. If they, the moment they say that, I should not have shared that testimony now. Ah, they'll be there for a while. <laughs> you see, he's trying to check. This thing you are saying, is it fluke? What is that one thing you believe? That even when the opposite is happening, you can't change your mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? Imagine someone who believes, I have the covenant of life. And right there when they are pointing gun at the person, I can't change what I believe. See, the worst that will happen is that the bullet will come out from the back of the gun. Do you understand what I'm saying? you? You must have convictions that are that deep. So let me hear you. What do you believe? <laughs> I, I think I was sharing, was it this morning during PPC? Or yesterday night, where we were praying, those who pray with me every night. All right? And on Sunday, I had left, I mean, my comfort to go to Lagos to meet with Daddy Gio. 
at the last minute, all the protocol changed. Suddenly, you can't, you can't, you can't. Ah! <laughs> and you see, everyone had been moved, those that would meet with him. And I was there. <laughs> I turned to, because I went with a friend. I turned to his wife. I said to him, I said, protocols don't rebel against me. You will see what will happen now. I have not finished saying that. I have not finished. I was still looking at her and talking. Somebody ran down. Apostle, where are you? Oh, yeah. Quickly, quickly. You must meet him today. Ah. You see, in the face of that, you can't take that from me. Protocols don't disappoint me. I, I, are you following what I'm saying? It is a consciousness. Your problem is that you believe you are blessed when new money enters your account. That's your problem. That's your problem. The money is not the blessing. The money is a product of the blessing. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? Say it, I know it like I know my name. I am so blessed. I am dangerously blessed. Now, I, I heard something in the course of the week, someone saying that there's no reward for giving in the kingdom. That when you give, you just... Ah, 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 ah. I also heard that what Abraham did offering Isaac is drama. That, that, is, that, that is not faith. Ah, ah. So God was also involved in drama when God said, now I know that you fear me. My God. See, you must be careful. In this, if you have not found reason to choose your teachers in this generation, ah, be careful. Oh. If not, you'll be messed up and come to church as the prodigal son, looking for a way to escape. Are you following what I'm saying here? How do you say that? So when God said, give, it shall be given unto you. All right? Full measure, pressed down, shaking together. Is God also playing drama? Is there anyone here that God has honored your giving before? Can you deny that? Your convictions must be intact. If not, you'll be messed up. Are you following what I'm saying here? Say loud and clear, I'm blessed. Amen. Now, <laughs> all right, give me Psalms chapter number one um, from verse one. All right. I told you that there are five horns of dominion. True? So I'm going to have to teach about the five horns today. And the first that I want to teach on is wealth. Now listen to have dominion. Please pay attention. Listen, everyone. Please look up. Look up. To have dominion. All right, as touching the head, there are certain things you can't do with explanation. Let's say, for instance, ministry. Do you have an idea of the amount of money that has been spent on the programs in the past few days? Do you have an idea? Has anyone ever sat down to think about it? That, hold on, how much is going into this? Do you have an idea? It's expensive. Ah, it is. See, I shared the story with you. One time I brought someone to bless us on campus, and he came to teach on the benefit or the importance of poverty. I said, we'll never bring you again. You see, because if you have a vision that is not financed, it won't fly. Before you say, God is not intent to bless the church with material prosperity, Taste prosperity first. If it is bad, put it aside. Renounce it. Give everything to the poor. Then come back and say that. Not people who are blessed saying that. That's wickedness. <laughs> True. The person saying that is blessed. <laughs> the ministry is on the radio, is on satellite, is on TV. They are paying millions of naira. Now, tell your neighbor, God wants you blessed. Right? We've read Third John 2 here several times. Say, beloved, I wish above all things that you may what? Prosper. Huh? And be in what? Health. But this prosperity is determined by the health of your soul. That is, your soul must be completely detached from greed. This is not the prosperity that is just about having money. 
There's a way to be so poor that all you have is money. Are you following what I'm saying here? So when we talk about material prosperity, we are not talking about um, somebody who wants money to be able to fly around and live luxurious life. No. No. What God is financing in your life is his agenda. And you will not be able to touch it in its depth until your life is about his agenda. You are going to destroy yourself if you are not busy about his agenda. And there's money doing nothing. Have you seen people who are so decent and modest until they can afford to live certain life and sin certain sins? Are you following what I'm saying here? Said God wants to finance his agenda. Now, listen, the moment your life become, right, is about God's agenda, that doesn't mean you are not in your workspace, in your field, in your marketplace. No. But you understand that I don't need too much to live fine. If God has blessed me more than enough, it is because there is something beyond me. How many bag of rice can you finish in a day? Are you following what I'm saying here? Huh? What God wants to finance is what? Agenda. The moment your life is about that, God will finance it. He wants to bless you. He wants you to have more than enough. And see, stop criticizing what you know you need. And join people who are... Have you seen places where people went for interviews and then some of those who are supposed to interview them will sit down amongst the people and they will just start raising statements like, I don't even like this job. I just came here to honor them. Let me even see what's going on. And the yeah, yeah, person that needs job will also say, me too. Must you contribute to everything? The, the, the need to contribute to every matter is a sign of low self-esteem. And I agree with everybody. If something is not going in line of your conviction, keep quiet. Because say, me too, I just came here just to check. And you will now meet the person inside. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Say, ah, ah, I, I know I'm not going to get this job. Let me just pick this tom tom and go. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes people condemn certain things because of insecurity. And say, don't mind them. It's not about being blessed. It's not about money. Ah. Now, give me this scripture. Um, Psalms chapter number one from verse one. Give me this scripture in Amplified Translation. Amplified Translation. Amplified Translation. Then we go to Revelation chapter number five. Give me an amplified translation. Amen. Look at it. What does it mean to be blessed? Happy, uh huh. Fortunate. Amen. Prosperous. What? Prosperous. What? Say, say prosperous. Say prosperous. What does this mean? To have prosperity. To prosper. There's a secret for prosperity. But you see, listen, one aspect of it is giving. But if you give, Without having what God should bless, you'll be very broke. You'll be a broke giver. Then you'll be offended. While you give, you must understand how to do excellently what you do. Now listen. Giving will not make God bypass the principles that operate in the world of men. If every time people come to do something with you, they cry. If you bake cake, they eat it with tears. One time we were going to make a robe, and we told a man, Abby, to make the robe. We, we sent the sample. If you see what he made, they can't wear it in hell. <laughs> Very fine robe, and you destroyed it like this? I, I told them, I said, tell this man to pick another profession ASAP, because this one, it can't become anything through this one. If you have not learned to master the craft of your hands and you are shouting in church, you will still be very broke. See, sometimes the worst people to trust with your work sometimes are those who shout in church. If, uh, one time, we, we had a program. I'm not saying, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello. It's okay to shout and be excellent. Is that okay? Yes, yes. I'm saying the way you are loud in church, be also be loud too in your place of work and do it well. 
make sure when people see what you do, they look twice. We were going to have a program. A sister volunteered that she's going to snap. 20 what? 2014. I've never seen it in my life. Ah, you know, I, I, honestly, till now I still feel the sister needs a checkup. I have the picture. I still have. Oh, yes. I would have asked Pastor Julius to forward the pictures to the media right now. The pictures are still there. I've never seen it in my life. Where you carry camera, you are looking through the camera, but you are snapping legs. You are snapping roof. They will snap one of your eyes and jump with it. I've never seen it. So I went for a wedding, and then they said somebody had volunteered to take pictures. So I was, and it was the same sister. Ah. Ekun. <laughs> Tears. It will end in tears. Are you following what I'm saying? So there are believers who, who, who fail those tests. They think that spirituality will override the principle of excellence. Until you have learned to do what you do best, forget prosperity. God bless the work of your hands, but God will not rub it out to people. The same thing you do, people consult you, they cry every time. You now say God will bless it, so more people can cry. Have you followed what I'm saying here? Have you seen people that will measure you? They, they will measure you meticulously and tell you, do your leg like this, do your hand like this. See, by the time the thing comes out, you are wondering, did you measure my shadow with these things? <laughs> did you measure me and my angels or something? You are wondering. Have you, have you not seen that before? Fashion designers are like, oh God. You add oh God to their name. You call him Benson, oh God. Or Ada Ye. You know, something that shows that <laughs> you chop stone. Or you say with Omoro or something. Oh, yes. Dangerous. Dangerous. Someone say, I'm a Christian. Someone say, I'm a kid. What I do is I cook. We eat the thing. We are asking how. How did the rice start tasting like semo? How? How? That's an event, a discovery. How do you say that your life is devoted to something and yet you can't do it well? What kind of life is that? Because sometimes we just think that if I can scabash, which is good to pray in tongues, I pray in tongues long. But you see, my life is structured in such a way that if ministry is what God has called me to, you can't stay under me in a message and not look forward to another time. Are you following what I'm saying here? So those of you who have been making people cry, and sometimes the reason why people are not prosperous is because they lack character. Wealth hangs on many balances. How can you say that you, you love God, God loves you, but everywhere you go to, people hate you, and you think you do well like that? Somebody is a vendor. People are trying to consult you. You are too busy trying to prove that you have money you don't have. This is my bill, and so that's it. You don't know how to talk to people, how to communicate, how to tell them, actually, it's what I take, but for the sake of being in the same family, what do you have? You know you have that relationship. There are times that what you get from a job is the relationship, not money. And the relationship will now bring you before those who can pay you. And it's not a way for people to use people. That's the fact. The relationship. And let me say this to you. I understand that every vendor wants advertisement, correct adverts on social media and all that. But everyone that wears your product is your free advert. So if you say somebody didn't pay well, so you give the person what they deserve, you have advertised yourself like that. You are cheating yourself twice. Say this person didn't pay well, so I just... Are you following what I'm saying here? And sometimes some people, can I talk to you a bit? Because uh, there's still many, can I talk to you tonight? So <laughs> let's just start from here. Sometimes people advertise powerful things on WhatsApp that they have no contact that is buying it. Are you advertising for the gods? Nobody there. Why? They've not built wealth of relationship. I, I was going to call someone 
today, and I mistakenly dialed a number. The man said, hello, hello, hey, what do you want? Ah, I said, <laughs> calm down. Are you expecting an enemy? He calm down. So I, I look at that attitude. If it was somebody who wants to bless the person, that's how you miss it. You cannot have the second chance to give first um, good impression. Build character. Because wealth likely flows with people. And if you are not at peace with them, you'll be very broke. You see, you can be the best at what you do, but still broke. Because people have chosen we don't want you. I'd rather get somebody else that can do this thing than you. If you are, I'm just going to say, if you are the last person, I'd rather not do it. Yeah. Tell you that if you are the last person to make my wedding gown or tie wrapper. That tells you that character is bad. And if I may add, sometimes some people have not learned. See, let me tell you, there's ethics in life. You collect numbers of people, both important people and your colleagues. Immediately, you start sending everyone broadcast. Immediately. Once you have people's number, you feel you must, you, must, you, must, you must disturb their life. And you are sending broadcasts about that. They just discovered an angel flying in Mexico. And this, this, this. They've said people should not eat beans again. You are sending broadcasts like our grandparents. And you are a young person. And you wonder why things are not fine. How will things be fine? Everyone who should call you for blessing are hungry in their heart with you. Whenever they see your broadcast, in fact, now, good messages and broadcasts are mixed together. They don't know how to open your stuff. I have messages I don't open. Just collected my number and broadcast. Let this be known unto you. What are you talking about? Are you following what I'm saying here? You must understand the principles that makes room for wealth in the world of men. You have to do what you do well with the blessing of God. You, are, you cannot be a mediocre and think God will bypass principles to lift you. It doesn't work. Even in ministry, listen to what I'm saying. You see, you will be, you will have resources to do ministry to the degree that you are a blessing. Yes. To the degree that, I'm still going to get there. To the degree that you are a blessing. Are you following what I'm saying here? All right? It's good to give, but don't forget the place of diligence with what you do. Maybe the third one I will have added to you is prudence. Don't be a waster. Some of you spend money on things you don't need, that you can't afford at your level, just because you want to make an impression. Don't be a waster. Resources doesn't flow in the direction of waste. What did I say? Resources doesn't flow in the direction of what? Of waste. Don't be a waster. There are people who have no structure for their finance. They have no budget. They have no plan. They just spend everything as it comes. No. Be careful. Be meticulous. Are you following what I'm saying here? Be meticulous. Plan your life. Plan it. All right? Then you must also strive to find new ways or better ways to do what you do. Don't let's be scared because now if you do something bad, they can't arrest you because you're in church. People should not be scared if I give it to him now and it does. Can we have somebody in church that everyone can vouch for? That if you give him, you won't regret. All right? So you have not, you, you have not, the fellow has not told you what they want to do. You are giving price. Price of what? That shows that you are not after value, you are after money. Those who chase money don't get it. It's those who chase values and relationships that get money. Can you, can you make clothes? Uh, sorry, I'm using clothes. That's one that is common. Okay, can you make cake? Um, for, uh, my bill is 250000 What kind of cake? Fruit cake, red velvet, chocolate cake, and so on and so forth. As a cake. Right. You have not discussed what's the size, what kind of covering. So when you are quick to mention money, it is clear that you are not after customer satisfaction. 
have you observed people who go for job interview and the whole vibe they are giving is that I need this job to solve poverty problem? They are not mentioning anything about what they are coming to contribute. You see, you cannot get if you are not contributing. What you want to do is to make sure that at every point in your life, you are building the capacity to be a blessing, to contribute. You are building that capacity. And sometimes you've got to learn how to serve with your giftings for free so certain doors can open. Like I've lost you, I've lost you there. You must learn it. Sometimes you'll have to serve with your giftings for free so certain doors can what? Open! And let me also strike the balance. That it is free does not mean it should be bad. What I tell people is that, see, it's okay to give me a gift, but you must know the quality of what I wear. I will not honor that gift to look bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. It has to be. So before you give anyone any gift, you check what is their standard. So it can be a gift indeed. Am I teaching you wisdom? And it can be useful. Now, I have this water bottle that I'm still expecting them to send from Lagos that I was given at a meeting. Now, I, I mean, at this point of my life, I, there's all these hamper, all those things. There's nothing I want to do with them. In all honesty, they are just there. Okay, now I, I came down from Abuja. Will I be parking hamper to Abuja? No. But they are honoring, and I understand the language. But I went to ministers, so I think Avestas. And then in the gift, they gave me this water flask. I take it to the gym every time. I take it everywhere I go. Oh, my God. It blessed me. All right. I, I, one time I forgot it on the plane. I went back. I said, you must get this thing for, for me. They were running everywhere. I said, which flight? This, this, this. And I got it back. Not because it is so big or because it ministered to my need. When the Bible says that the gifts of a man will make way for him, it is not your gift as to what you can do. It is, it is your gift as to what you offer. There are doors you don't knock with empty hands. Are you aware? You have to be taught. Ha! Ah, there are doors you don't knock with empty hands. All right, I, I, I shared the story. I'm going to move on from this now. I shared the story with you. It was the story of um, Yemi Kings. All right, I mean, we've been in the house praying. God, one day just access to T.Y. Belo. Heard that she has a master class. Are you following what I'm saying here? And there are people that you need in your life that you have to enroll for their paid programs. I take people serious who enroll for paid programs than people who are looking for free stuffs. Are you following what I'm saying here? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. All right, so he went there and she had done the meeting. Um, it was a photography master class. He couldn't get, uh, the door was shut by the time he got there. So he hung on the window to pee, to see what she was teaching. And by the time she was done, she met him at the, on the window trying to jot. And she looked at him and said, come down, what's your name? Say, my name is Yemi. Say, wow. And said, please, ma'am, I also came with a gift for you. And before that meeting, he had checked online, what is that one gift she likes that she cannot reject? He saw that it's a, um, a journal. So he bought the gift and said, I bought customized for her. She was so impressed, he said, follow me. And she took him to a private room and taught him alone for one hour. Alone. Your gift will make room for you. Stop being stingy. And sometimes it's not stinginess, it's just being unwise. Are you following what I'm saying here? Huh? I don't know if I should share this. You see, okay, I will, I will share some other time, but all right, make sure you understand how the world of men functions. Are you following me now? <laughs> very, very important. Very, very important. Now you must understand that material prosperity is essential for dominion. It's essential. The Bible said a poor man is hated even by his own friends. 
There's a poor man that saved the city. All right, he delivered the city. But at the end of the day, there was no recognition of his effort. No memory. You need to walk in financial dominion to be strategic in life. There are things you want to do. They will only remain ambitions without finance. Are you following what I'm saying here? So when you understand that this kind is actually as a result of the health of your spirit, it is not the one from greed. There are people running from pillar to post. Hey, 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 this, this, this. It is the blessings of God that makes rich and add no sorrow. He said, remember the Lord your God. It is he that giveth you power to get wealth. So there is a release from God that energizes what you do. So in a place of doing what you do right, don't also reject God. Because he's the one that gives power to get what? Wealth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Say God gives power. Come on, say it again. To get wealth. Say it again, he gives power to get wealth. Say it again, he gives power to get wealth. The second horn, now is going to get a bit, we're entering now, of dominion, is the horn of influence. The first is what? Wealth. The second is what? The horn of what? Influence. Somebody say influence. influence. Say it again, influence. Now, another word sometimes that is used interchangeably for influence is the word fame. But I'm not using that word because influence is largely deeper than fame. Than, than fame. Now, let me show you a scripture. Luke chapter number 4. Luke chapter number 4. Now, we, we look at verse 14. Luke chapter number 4, verse 14. Now, look at this very, very powerful scripture. And Jesus returned, that is, after the wilderness experience, he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him. Listen, listen, listen well. Your life will be largely limited without the spotlight of God on you. There are doors that will never open unless your fame has gone ahead. Now, the pastor who came and said, Apostle must be, it's because he has been blessed by my teachings. When the work of your hand spread, that is you spreading in advance. Do you understand what I'm saying? When the work of your hand spreads, that is you spreading what? In advance. There are places you have not gone to, but your story, your works have gone there. You must understand that. Influence, you need it as a tool to walk in dominion. Now, in Shushan, the place, there was a decree that all Jews should be exterminated. It was a very strong de decree. All right? They have gone to fast. They put themselves in fasting. Mordecai told Esther, who fast. Esther said, you people go and start fasting and praying for me. I will go and see the king. Influence is largely, most sometimes, about being in the corridor of power. Let me show you a few things. You must understand that. Say it, God wants us to wield influence. Come on, say it again. Now you must understand this. Please get this essentially. Influence is not a gift. It is built. Influence is not a gift. Now let me explain because what I showed you here is fame. So let me explain what influence is. Let me give you a few definitions of influence so you can understand that. Influence, listen to this. Influence is the heart of being relevant. The heart or the science that's what the word heart suggests. The heart of being irrelevant. To be influential or to have influence in a system is to be indispensable. That is, I have so willed a strategic position that certain things can move without me. For instance, the resident pastor of this church does not have to beg for influence in this church. Is in a strategic place. Do you understand what I'm saying here? To, to have influence is to be what? To be relevant. When they are discussing things that matter, do you have a place in it? You say they invite us and so ministers for meetings. It's because they are relevant to what they are doing. Never beef relevance. Become relevant. 
don't beef relevance. And don't try to explain other people's relevance away. You become relevant. Influence is also the ability to impart men and transform their lives. That is, you are, listen, look up, everybody, look up quickly. You are influential to the degree that your presence ministers change to somebody's life. That is, you are not just an object of existence. There is a transformation my life has experienced because you exist. If my life is an instrument of transformation in your life, then I'll be influential in your life. Are you seeing that now? So what that means is, you are largely influential around those your impact reach. So how do you multiply influence? Multiply impact. How do you multiply impact? Grow. Are you following what I'm saying here? You are largely, so it is those who know you that know you are a champion. Those who don't know you don't send you. You are influential around those who have experienced your impact. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Do not light a candle and put it under a bushel. If you want what God has placed on your life to go far, you must learn to set it on the city top. Learn to be strategic about spreading. Many believers are coward. They cower inside. And they say, I'm, play, I'm, I'm laying low. When those who don't have what you have are playing big. Are you following what I'm saying here? Do you understand what I'm saying here? You must, you want to get that thing that is blessing lives. You want to put it in such a way it can bless more lives. More lives. You sing in your room, they clap. Take it out. Export what is good. Export it. It is foolishness to have it and hide it. Are you following what I'm saying here? You are not influential where your impact has not reached. You can be famous for nothing. But you cannot be influential for nothing. Do you know what influence means? Influence means my presence can change the course of things. That's what it means. My word can change things. Now, tomorrow, all Nigerians will gather around their TV screens to check the results of what those who wield influence over the judges have decided. To think that it's going to be about justice is to not know the way the world system works. From the day this world began, those who wield influence will always determine the course of things. And the reason why they rubbish us as church and they can rub many things in our face because we brought our influence only to the church and we drew it from the society. And it is still unfortunate that we are still not seeing societal transformation as part of our dominion mandate. What kind of dominion do we work in? The poor are still poor. The beggars are still on the street. The widows are not taken care of. And God emphasized this again and again. That is interested in societal transformation. We, we withdraw our influence and, may, and present it as it is only essential when we pray. Who can call the state governor and say there's something they are doing that we have to think twice? In the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, in the next 30 years, will you be among someone that is important enough for people who need political position to consult. You know you can be that even as a businessman. You know, one of the, I studied this election and I discovered that while some people were busy on the street and doing all those things, some were going to see some kings, some this, some that. I'm not going to go into the matter because I'm not, I'm not involved yet. yet. Because this world is a wicked world. It is not enough to have opinion. You must also have money as a defense. If, if you talk now, they carry you for nothing. With your anointing, you'll be in DSS custody. 
this thing requires wisdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? I am better off a blessing outside than for you to be praying night and day, God release him. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, I'm telling you, it is a wicked world. You can drop the mic now and say, follow us. So you wait till when your hand can add. You understand what I'm saying? See, people like Dr. Paul and come out and say, you poor bastard, wise bad boy. Oh, boy. I am not Dr. Paul. Look. When you get to the level, uh -huh. but when you are still at your level, you talk now. It is you they carry. All the anger they have for those men, they put it on you. Are you seeing the reason why it is not enough to have an opinion? Money is a defense. Say, wow. hey, this is my opinion. <laughs> you know the way they beat a cow that is coming last. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? Say it, have wisdom, have wisdom. But let me say this to you. We will keep being stranded and being victims of other people's decision as long as we fail to rise. Let's listen to this. The hunger, the desire to do what you are doing at better platforms must be in your heart to be influential. To do what you are doing at big stage. See, there's a fear you must embrace. And being a part of your life is a sign you are growing. That, that wave you feel when you are introduced to bigger platforms. First time on TV. First time on CNN. First time. You need many of those first times. See, your psyche will change. You have to prepare yourself for greatness. Prepare yourself for it. Educate yourself for it. Don't just sit down. Do you understand what I'm saying? Prepare yourself for it. Learn the language. Learn the culture around the place of power. Learn it. If not, you will shout till you are 80. You must learn it. We will be victims of other people's decisions, the things they are saying. We will gather ourselves and they have determined our lives without our consent. Because we have no man. We have no man. Listen to this. You cannot wield influence in a system that your contribution cannot be traced. That is, if we look for what you have contributed and we can't see it, you are not influential and you are not important. Listen, I, I wish I can tell you to stop writing and let me talk to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? This, this culture of I am just a quiet person. It will rob you more than the devil itself. See, listen, there are games in systems. There are politics in systems. You can play them. And you don't have to stain your hands to play them. Anywhere there's politics, I can't function. You are a fool. Others who are not as smart as you will get what you who is better can get. See, when there's politics in the place, I can't cope. You are, that's low self-esteem. Understand systems, the way they function. Systems are not godly. Daniel, listen, Daniel was not in church. He was in a palace. At some point, he was in a shrine. He was called among their gods. They said he has become like one of the gods. And he functioned there with their robes, with their name, with their language, but largely controlling things for kingdom. You must understand that. And what was the entry point? Excellence. Excellence. So, oh Lord, put that grace on me that all the eyes that see me cannot reject me. As what? As what? When there are many people who are not calling your Jesus and can replace you. Listen to what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. In a system where your replacement is not scarce, silence is foolishness. That they don't, see, anywhere they don't have to think too far to replace you. You are not fulfilling your dominion mandate. Like, sometimes they are even waiting for you. Mess up. We are tired of you being here. Yes! I've seen it several times. You have to break yourself indispensable before you, can make, before you start making certain demands. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? I can leave your company for you now. I can. As what? What are you controlling? What do you determine? What is, what is better in the company because you came? So when you say that, eh, actually, eh, they should give him for devotion in this company, as what? They must have seen that that prayer you are praying, something is coming as a result that they need before they will embrace it. Listen, you cannot wield influence in a system that you are neutral in. Neutrality is deception. You must pick a side. You must wake up and be active. Whenever they are discussing things that matter, and somehow it looks as though believers have made it look that being silent is wisdom. And we are doing competition of silence. And the world, the world is wondering, what is happening? Are we not in this together? No, they can't talk. Because they are waiting for the first person they respect to talk. They can't talk. They have, they have no opinion. They have not been built like that. Neutral. Passive. What can we do? Just quiet. And see, what's your condition? Ah, what they said the other time is good. No system will value a person like that. You must learn to bring meaningful contribution and bring it always. Always. Any system you are neutral in, you are not influential in the system. Neutrality is, is a thief of influence. Once your contribution in any system is not obvious, the train of influence will move on without you. Once your contribution in any system is not obvious, the train of influence will move on without you. What I'm telling you is that you have a can do. We are not denying it. Don't put it under a bushel. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't put it under a what? Bushel. Make noise. Make noise. You are, they make noise you are hearing. It's not the one. <laughs> make noise. Tell our friends to make noise. Make some noise. Do you understand that? The one who is talking will look like the only one grace to do it. The one who is quiet, it doesn't matter what, it will look like he's in the wrong place. This is the way systems work. Wake up. And guess what? Even your prayer cannot make these principles to bend. Because God respects principles. Now, listen. There are questions you must answer before we begin to talk about influence. What do I want to be known as? See, that question must be answered. When you see me, when you hear the name Femi Lazarus, I must be, see, listen, I must be precise about what I want to come to your mind. I, can, I must not leave it for you to decide. I must decide it from where I am by controlling what goes out. I must, there are many, I'm wearing a coat of many colors. There are many aspects to my life. I train ministers, Walk in the miraculous, I teach, I do all those things, I, I am involved in business. I, I can talk to her almost any case, from marriage to business to all those things. But you see, there are certain things you can do, but you must not be known for. There are certain abilities you have, but you have decided you must not be known for. Jack of all trades is master of none. You have to, you have to constructively package your PR. Many believers don't know anything about this. Constructively. You say, I'm in the media world. In this media age, you don't even know that it is not a crime for you to update your profiles every year. That is, get for, to take you new profile pictures. Wear something nice. You are the same person that will say God has called you to ministry in the 21st century. You are wearing that shiki on flyer. How will if which generation do you want to talk to? How? You will be sound, but only those in your village will know. You see, you 
package the opinion now that you want us to have. Package it. Help our minds to see you. Give us what to think. Give us what to believe. Those in the world must not know this, know this more than you. You see, I belong to a platform. I mean, it's a very powerful platform in this country. I don't like to talk about it. Many politicians are on that platform. Um, senators, young guys, and all that. Um, someone put the platform together. And I noticed that this guy, there, there's a guy. There's a guy now who is, all right, in the political arena. I don't want to mention his name. I have known this guy for about 13 years. I met him 2010. When I met this guy, the only, in the days of Blackberry, the, the, all the pictures on his phone, you see, he has, he has, they've edited them everywhere. He's about something about Nigeria, talking about, they were, they, they started packaging their life for that purpose early. You will not say, they are going there to embezzle you that you want to correct them. What is your life about? Package yourself! Oh, I speak, I, see, see, and I, 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 I was telling this one of my people, I don't want to mention that, yesterday. Anywhere you have to introduce yourself and say, this is what I do for now, you have wasted the opportunity. Why must you have for now? To let them know you are not progressing. Actually, this is where I am for now. We know you are not someone we should take serious. Talk about what you do elegantly. You may have as a bonus where you are going to next. For now is a sign you are stagnated. You must understand the way to communicate around people who wield influence. Am I making sense to you? Package yourself at the mind of your helpers. Don't make it difficult for God to convince them you are the one. Because you don't even look like it. What do you do? The question again is, what do you want to be known for? You are the one that will take pictures in front of the gutter. You are the one that will, you mess things up. And it looks like God has not graced you. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you this wicked to yourself? You look powerless because you have presented yourself so. You look weak because that's your courage. And somehow you have believed in your heart. That is like there's a different slot for our kind. And then their kind. Nobody cares about where you're coming from. Show us what you can do. Show us where you are. Show us where you're going. Dress like where you're going, not where you're coming from. Dress like it. Talk like it. Look like it. Wake up, Christians. Unbelievers understand these things more than you. And they are invading the systems. Look at what is happening in America. Look at how they entered the system. I don't even want to go there yet. Look at how the Arab nation, they are infiltrating every country. Some of the most notable sports now move to Arab. They are buying some of your best players. Very soon, it will no longer be European Premier League. That will, are you saying money is not powerful? You must understand these things. And the way it works... This world will not forgive you for the way you present yourself. The world system doesn't forgive you. The way you present yourself is the way they will take it. One time like that, this is a very funny story, and I don't like to talk about these things again. But let me just share this one. One time like that, myself, my friend, years back, we're talking about a sister, like let's even check her out, this, 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 and all that. So we're going to talk. I said, my friend, we're going to meet her, and then we'll sit down around the school garden and talk. When the sister came down from bike, that's how she felt led by village people to go and buy roasted corn. On the, and that's how she was. We avoided the sister. Will, you, will it interest you that there are people who are seated here who still eat on the road? And they are the ones saying, I'm a global figure. Where? I'm a global figure. I'm a global figure. Maybe the globe you have in your toilet. A global figure. We don't understand all these things. We don't know how it works.
Lift your hands. Say it again. I am powerful. Come on, stand up. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Step back and look at yourself. Say it again. I'm powerful. Come on, walk around. I am not normal. I'm not normal. I'm not normal. I'm not normal. Amen. Amen. Now, listen. If I meet you, you don't have to know me for me to leave you with an impression that you have met a powerful person. From the way I greet you, hello, how are you doing? Good to see you. Eyeball to eyeball. Good to see you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> listen, all this kneeling down, bend down, it does not always have economic value. No, there are places that when you enter and that's what you present, Oti Goni, you have entered. Say, I blow about I'm telling you the fact. Stand. You must understand the psychology of this realm. Are you following what I'm saying here? Huh? We went somewhere yesterday. When was that? Was it on Sunday? All right. I didn't have a pass to enter. But we drove in. He said, oh, what do you want? He said, yeah, I have an appointment here. The way we looked at the people, the man come say, open the, as we drove in, a big man was riding up and down. He said, please follow me, follow me, follow me. Follow. Yeah. And you know the way I walk. <laughs> I walked in there majestically. Everybody were turning their head. Someone powerful has entered. It is a consciousness. You are the one that will present yourself. They will go and put you at the back. Because of your consciousness, the way you treat yourself. The way you treat yourself is the way you meet it all. Say it again, I'm powerful. Praise God. All right, be seated. Ah. You must understand the way these things work. Once your contribution in any system is not obvious, the train of influence will move on without you. I am influential to the degree that what I'm doing is relevant in solving problems in people's lives. So you must be solving a problem to wield influence. What problem are you solving? Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you understand what I'm saying? You must be solving what? A problem. Even in ministry, you must be solving a problem. All right, because there are persons who are not solving problems. They just have someone on Sunday, Sunday. And the members need other pastors elsewhere to be blessed, to be edified, edified to grow. You must structure your life in a way that it is meeting needs. Are you following what I'm saying there? Huh? Sometimes people reach out and say, Apostle, please give me the honor of blessing you, of sowing, all right? Because they have been blessed. Not because they like my face. Because they have been what? Nobody will honor you for fine face. Though. They honor you for being blessed. You understand what I'm saying now? Because you have blessed their lives, so they say, all right, let's honor you. You have a ministry. The ministry will prosper to the degree that it solves problems. No ministry that is just existing prosper. You see, this is the way it works. Fast for 40 days for financial prosperity, you'll be broke. All right? Are you raising men? Are you solving problems? Are you a blessing to their lives? Are you following what I'm saying here? Praise God. Now look at it. Influence is wielding power. It is the ability to cause change in people and in systems. What is the what what change can your weight effect? That's the question. What change can your weight effect? How many people can boldly eat their chest today and say, thank God for your existence, apart from your parents and friends? That they look and say, thank God for your existence. 
It is those who can say, thank God for your existence that can bless you. Are you seeing that you are looking for resources in the wrong place? Increase your importance. Every other thing will follow. Increase your importance. Increase your importance. Increase your importance. Are you following what I'm teaching you? Is it clear enough? Is it clear enough? Now, look at this. When the wrong people are in power, everyone suffers. All right? So, it means good people must not leave the seat of power for wrong people. Never believe anyone that tells you that believers have no business around politics. Are you governed? If you are. So, must you allow people who are wrong to govern you? Are you living the quality of life you should live? Look at what is happening in Africa. And I'm not saying that once a person is a Christian, then they are good to wield influence in this area. No, it is a Christian that has been educated in kingdom curriculum. The ones that best represent kingdom. What we have in Nigeria today is not lack of Christians in power. We have fake and wrong Christians in power. We are not taught. You are, you are entering into a system that is... It, it is built to corrupt anyone that enters. You must have engaged in a curriculum that is superior. You must have been taught by a system that is higher. Do you know what it means to have an opportunity? Listen. That someone just calls you, a politician you pray for, and say, can I just have 10 billion in church account? 10 billion. Can I just hide 10 billion? Just for a while. And it's going to be there for another five years. You quickly use it to do some things. And then pull back. Then you start discovering that there's a lifestyle you've always wanted to live. That you've not been able to afford. You must have engaged in a curriculum that is God-centered. For you to survive such exposure. You see, don't blame people if you are here to be exposed to what they're exposed to. Don't just sit down from your corner and say, what are they doing there? Have you tasted influence at a level? Wealth at a level. Do you know what it means to have 100 million you are not using? Just there. You are not using it. And your head is correct. You have humility. You are evangelistic. You evangelize. With 100 million, you are not using. Okay? You pray. Pray your life. Correct one. Okay? You still fast. Good. You are punctual to church. You are submissive. Are you seeing that now? Then you can talk a bit. This one that 10 million make you think of whether your pastor is a good man or not. Is that the person talking? There are believers who will do us more harm than those who are there now because they are dangerous. Their possibilities are very bad. They are just trying to use God as a means of breakthrough. And you see their real color. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Influence is not just popularity. It is problem solving. Influence is what? Problem solving. Influence is what? Problem solving. Without influence, there are things that will only remain a desire in your heart. You will never be able to do them. So a real influence is liberation. Real influence is liberation to do the counsel of God in your heart. Now, look at this. Let me, all right. To, this is a very important one. To be a person of influence, build your life. Listen to this. Build your life around the demands of your calling. Look up. Okay, write it then. Look up. Let me talk to you a bit on that. What do you do? What's your field? To be a person of influence. Go so deep and so well in it. Build yourself in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, years back, um, when some of these guys were on campus, remember you guys were in part two, they're not there about. All right? I had a few of them. They were going to start a business. Say they were going to start food business and stuff like that. Say they were going to, you remember that story? They were going to White Wall to go and pray about all that. And then to have strategy meeting. 
So I said, how, how did it go? He said, my God, it, it was powerful. How will strategy meeting be powerful? I said, okay, wow, interesting. He said, ah, God moved amongst us. Okay. He said, read the book of Kennedy again, Plans, Purpose, and Pursuit. You must have plan for every gathering. Even when you were around the church, and every time you close late and say the Holy Ghost came, you will not grow. I've lost Africans there. You will not go. Every time. Keep people. Let me not even go there. So I said, well, so they played one long recording. It was just singing in tongues. The business didn't start. Oh. It didn't start. Talk less of working. It didn't start. It didn't even take off. So after all those invita- visitation of the Holy Ghost, this invasion, all these, ah, caca, we only somebody older. Oh, don't bring clothes. Don't let her tear clothes. Last, last, cop boy you didn't make from the business. Build your life around your calling. If you are a speaker, learn to speak. Learn to speak and learn from the best. Build yourself. Go so deep in it, you cannot be ignored. Make sure your life is just waiting for one opportunity. Not two, not ten. One! That if I can, if I can get a chance to break through here and they can see what I do, nobody can refuse this one. Build yourself while you wait for opportunity. Build yourself. Build your life! And permit me to stay on the subject of ministry for a while. You see, some, one, one of the things that so irritates me is that you find many young people say, what I'm doing now is full-time ministry. No problem. But what are you doing with that full-time? For two years in that full-time, you can't quote ten scriptures. You are dangerous to yourself. For two years in that full-time, you are not discipling ten people. What are you doing? Build curriculum. You are not. What do you do? I read my Bible, I pray. We also do it and we go to work. If those who go to work are better than you who is doing full time, check your life again. You are lazy. There are many people in full time ministry who have no business around this. Work! Unless God said that you can hold. And that usually comes when you are busy working and they tell you to stop. Not that you have never done anything meaningful, you just say, God said this. And I lie. You may be afraid of employment. Quote me anywhere. There are many people in ministry who are afraid of trying to apply for any job and they get rejected. They now say, God said this. God cannot say it without a proof, without a backup. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can I be very honest with you? You see, when our ministry was starting, God gave me an instruction, a very serious one, to pray and fast for long. One thing you can never call me in that season, you may call me broke, you can never call me lazy, and you can't call me visionless. You know that this man is working. He's, he's building so we can't see it here. We can't see it here, but he's working. He, you see books, papers, scattered, write-ups. And we are building something it will show, but it has not shown. Now is the proof. Work! How will you be convenient with waking up and sleeping at night without any contribution to humanity? What kind of life is that? How do you live your life to one day that something will suddenly happen? How does it happen? You make our prayers of no effect because you are not taking responsibility. I found many people in what is in code full-time ministry that is rubbish. This thing you are doing, you can actually still work. Apologies if I step on toes, but somebody has to be bold enough to tell you. You're not building yourself they don't attend any programs. They are not learning anything. You just say, hey, but I, I'm doing full time. No! And we have made ministry look like, look like a joke because of these things. I had a guy. The guy will go to the market every time for evangelism. Come back with pepper and tomato and fish every time. Go and get a job. He said, God has told me to evangelize. Then don't stop collecting fish. See if one guy will not kill you. Stop collecting fish.
I just have to be frank with you. See, I'm not against full-time ministry. But even we, if you, there's no resource to show, no problem. But make sure that if your wife looks at you, she can never say you are lazy. My wife always asks me, how do you combine all these things? You know when your wife is asking you that, you are trying. When your wife will come and kneel down, oh, celebrate my wife. When your wife will come and kneel down in front of you, I say, teach me. My God, who have I married? You know you are a priest. You know. Many people's wives don't respect them because they know they are not doing what they are preaching. They know. Women can't pretend. They know that he's lying, he's deceiving them. <laughs> As he's talking, they'll be saying, If you are in ministry, you walk. Evangelize. Eat the street. Eat the street. Eat the street. Preach. You have chairs empty and you are the one sleeping and waking up by 9 a.m. Doing what? Do what? Eat the street. Teach the men to eat the street. How do you think we are doing the things we are doing? We got a big hall in Abuja. I say, fantastic. A big hall is an insult if all the chairs are empty. The robots will say, Agbadoji not talk with Tayo. It's in Belo or it's in Belenu. You will walk. Increase is an invitation for more work. It's not something you stand there and boast about. Before this year ends, we are opening a new church in Kano. We are opening a new church in Ghana. We are opening a new church in UK. I'm, I'm telling you so that you can track me. I don't have space for frivolities. There are people who say, I want to have access to your apostle. Ask what? Tell me. I must know my role. Say just to be your friend. It can't work. I choose my friends. You can't choose me. No, when your life becomes significant, don't let people choose you. Choose. Now you can negotiate. And it's not pride. You let everybody make you their friend, you'll be in trouble. They tell you things that you don't have business about. Business. No, no. I have friends that we talk on the phone for an hour, but it is mutual edification. And I have other friends that call and say, Apostle, how are you doing this? Ah, I so love that. Because I have people I call too. Say, so correct. Now it's worth it taking your call. It's worth it. I know what it is. See, at this phase of my life, you can't just call me and say, I just want to greet you. Ah, you see, as much as I appreciate it, but a text message will do better. True or not true? Yes. You must understand when things are changing. You must understand that. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Is it simple enough? We need to wake up. 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 Don't alt God's plan for your life. Don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. Build yourself around the demands of your calling. Become so important in that field. Let me tell you something. There's, yes, thank God for the call of God upon my life. But there is an aspect in the body of Christ that I am deliberately and intentionally making myself indispensable for. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you can't think twice. Sometimes I ask myself, what has men like Dr. Uh, Reverend Sam Adeyemi done? That even a five seconds video you want to hear again, that is work. Be too low dead. That everybody will glean their ears to hear you. Stop this life of ordinariness. Nothing will change like that. Nothing is going to change one day suddenly. Oh, the change is going to come gradually as you build your effectiveness. It's going to happen. Are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? We need to wake up. Some of us need to cry and repent for wasting time. You have wasted too much time. And it looks like God is not faithful. See, I tell people, as much as we talk about eh, girls should understand, a guy sees him, oh boy, any girl has the right to reject anybody that she does not feel is, vision, is visionary enough. And you can stand your ground. Even if later he gets well, stand your ground. I know what I rejected. Sometimes it's that, listen, sometimes it's that pain that will push the person to go and do something. If I didn't leave you, you will not become this. 
Wake up, my friend. Don't live your life on emotions. There are people who left me and my head came back. Oh, yes. I don't believe in nature people are just pampering themselves. See, walk out if it's not the future God showed you. Oh, yes, only one guy thanked me here. You just laugh. You see, didn't thank me. <laughs> Service the demands of your calling. Then start behaving like where you are going. Stop behaving like a child. There is an uninvited crowd, invisible crowd, watching you. Watching your every move. Stop behaving like a child. Put out the things that I defy, that are correct. Be too, see, see, I'm not saying we should just be too serious, but be serious. Be serious. Be serious. Everything you want to put out, make sure they are, they are carefully put out. Are you following what I'm saying? They are carefully put out. Learn. See, the fact that you are doing something for the first time does not mean it must be bad. Yes. So you want, to, you want to do a video and then say, I want to do a video broadcast to release to people, uh, maybe in ministry. You now start with, uh, um, praise God, everyone. This is Pastor so, so, so Is that the way we are doing it? Is that the way we are doing it? If that's the way we are doing it, will you be inspired? I'm about to run a training on that. I'm about to run a training Viewers all over the world, this is yourself. Your... You know where you should be? Abayagani. Wake up. You don't have to behave like your past. You owe it to your future to be more enlightened daily. You owe it. Nobody should have to motivate you to be better. You, you, you should wake up motivating yourself. It is wickedness on us, and you misunderstand us and misjudge us for pushing you to do what you should push yourself to do. There are many times before I left, Ibano, people will get offended at me for telling them, don't be lazy. If you are lazy, we'll tell you you are lazy. Don't be lazy. Get offended. Say, how can we talk like that? Because God has blessed him now. If he's, are you seeing people respond to value with emotions? Who is saying because God has blessed him? We're saying, don't be lazy. The fact that you are doing something for the first time does not mean it must be bad. Tell your neighbor that. Nobody should have to teach you, you too, that you are videoing yourself. You are looking at your face in the, in the camera. Show that. What you are seeing is it good. Powder is finished in the world. Powder has finished. To present it and speak well. Nowhere to put your mic. I don't even want to enter that one. Are you learning something? Are you sure? Start behaving like where you are going. Start behaving like where you are going. How oh, wow. This, this shoe looks nice on you. Ah, it's brothers that gave me. Did they ask you? The need to explain is a sign that you have low self-esteem. When you give more information than what is required, you are showing that you don't belong to that class. Behave like where you're going. You can learn it. Make sure when we look at your life every day, we are seeing consistent improvement. We may not see the result, but as long as you keep growing, it will show. It will what? It will show. There's a reason why I've kept this teaching for today. I dropped the mic around the way. One of the, what it means to carry yourself like the past is to walk without awareness. You must be aware. This is who I am. Then as God is blessing you, start changing your dress sense. I can't wear this again. I should move beyond this to this level now. Don't be wicked to your destiny. 
Number three, on of dominion. Are you ready for me? Or are you getting tired? Should I round up? Number three, the gift of men like horses. Men like horses. Now, this is a very serious one. Men like horses. Now, I want us to look at this scripture. First Samuel 26 from verse 1 to 8. First Samuel 26 from verse 1 to 8. First Samuel 26 from verse 1 to 8. Now, put your, everybody look at the screen so we can learn something very important from here. Now, look at it. Look at, I want you to look at this story, very interesting story. And the, the Ziphites came unto Saul to Giba, saying, Does not David hide himself in the hill of Aquila, which is before Jesimon? Yes, continue. And Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 3, men from the day. He wanted to kill David for one man, 3,000 men. All right? 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Yes. And Saul pitched in the hill of Aquila, which is before Jesimon, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness. And he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in, in very deed. Yes. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner, the son of Nah, the captain of his host, and Saul lay, lay in the trench. And the people pitched around about him. Then answered David and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai, the son of Zeboiah, the brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul, to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go with you. Even in the most dangerous terrain, do you have men that can say, Where you go, I go. I will go with you. Many of you are largely lonely because you are not investing in men. Where David was going, 3,000 men were there. If, they should, if one of them should wake up, he would be dead. The guy understood the danger of these people. He said, listen, have you seen people that, that have so loved you that they are ready to die? See, listen, to despise the gifts of men, is to fail quickly. Listen, what was the cause on Cain? What was it about Cain? It, one of the major terrible things about the cause is that no man will help him. He said it is too grievous that anybody that sees you wants to hurt you, not to help you. He said it is, I can't bear this. The, the weight of this is too much. The guy said, Abishai said, I will go with you, David. It may cost you your life. I'm going to go with you. First Chronicles 12 verse 22. First Chronicles 12 verse 22. Look at it. First Chronicles 12 verse 22. Very important scripture. Look at it. For at that time, day by day, there came to David to help him. All right? Until it was a great host like the host of God. That is, listen, David has been anointed as king. But without the gift of men, he would die. He was anointed. No doubt about it. But there was a need for men to be in his life. David got to the throne because the next thing that followed the anointing was men. That's the next thing. Men came. And when those men came, they came as men who were indebted. They came as men who were a shadow of them. Can you recognize your mighty men in their season? Can you recognize your mighty men? These men were not mighty. They were not looking like it. Is that First Samuel 22? So, the man who claims to be anointed must have the release of men. Daily, I am doing what I am doing today because I am helped with the gift of men. Some people have made dangerous decisions for me. I can stake my life around you. And I know that I can't fail. And I look at them. I am not going to pamper them, but I know the weight of that decision. Do you know what it means for people to abandon where they could have gone and say, we follow you. Where you go, we go. Your God, our God. Your people, our people. 
at the level that this ministry is, we cannot be doing what we are doing by volunteers. It takes men who have staked their life. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like this sermon is not for you. <clears throat> at certain levels, your visions can't fly with volunteers. <laughs> there's a need for men. There's a need for men. I said there's a need for men. There's a need for who? For men. Praise God. Now look at it. Second Samuel 23. Second Samuel 23. Let's start reading from... Let's start reading from verse 1. Look at the words of David. Second Samuel 23 from verse 1. Now this be the last words of David, the son of Jesse. All right, David. David, son of Jesse, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, yes, the spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Yes. And God of Israel said, the Lord of Israel spake unto me, he, he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Yes. And it shall be as the light, all right, as the light of the morning, when the sun rises, even the morning without clouds, and the tender grass springing out of the earth by clay shining after the rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he had made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things, and sure, and this is all my salvation, and all my desire, although he maketh it not to grow. Yes. But this, but the sons of Belial shall, all of them are stones, thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. Yes. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced. It's a wicked world, though. You need the fence of men. Fenced with iron and the staff, all right, of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. Look at verse 8 now. This be the names of the mighty name of David, the Taclomite, which sat in the seat chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Hez Knight. He littered up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Can you, can you look at what men were doing? Do you know what it means to have dangerous men like this in your crib? On your side, and they did not come like this. They did not come like this. My testimony in life is that I can meet people in their raw form and give me time with them. You see, the life you keep living for yourself alone, the days will come back to haunt you. It will be very bad. There's nobody on earth that can boast of your contribution and impact in their lives. Nobody. You eat alone. You spend alone. If people will reach out to you for anything, you have a ready made message for them. I just spent it yesterday. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Hawite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the, the Philistines. All right, that were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away, yes? And he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary. And his hand claved to his sword. And the Lord wrought great victory that day. And the people turned out time only to spoil. One man. One man. May you be given the gift of men of power. Men of means. Let me say this to you. In this world, it matters who is against you, sir. Sit down for a while. Let me... Can I beg you? Can I beg you? It is not everybody you can leave. Let this fact humble us. Can I beg you again? You see, one of the signs that you are beginning to understand dominion is that there is a level of anger you cannot nurse. That I am angry, but I understand a purpose bigger. That if I get angry and do this, I have cheated my life for life. You see, the culture of yeah, 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 nothing happens. You will be largely stranded in life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Largely. I'm begging you in the name of Jesus. These men were mighty, but it took a David with a Davidic anointing to forge them. They could have remained indebted. They could have remained broken men. They could have remained men of, of, of no repute. Do you understand what I'm saying?
I wanted to show you a scripture, 1 Samuel 22 or so. 1 Samuel 22, when David was going to be killed. It's 1 Samuel 22 or so. The men came to meet him and said, now that we have discovered that you are the target, don't go to war with us. Let us go. First is that you have the men that can say, we'll go with you. Second, do you have the men that will say, let us go for you. There are two different levels. Relax. We'll do it. We'll get it done. You, even Jesus, listen to this, listen to this. Jesus did not need any gift of the Spirit because he's God. But he needed the gift of men. If Jesus cannot fulfill his assignment without the gift of men, to say you don't need men to do yours is to claim to be bigger than God. Jesus needed 12. He needed 3. At some point, he, 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 the burden became so much, he needed someone to confide in. The God of heaven can confide in a man and say, pray with me. But you say there's nobody to be trusted. You are your own problem. It is people who are not trustworthy that have trust issues because they know what they can do. They know how wicked they are. They know how their yes means no. They know how, how unsincere they are what they say. They know how words are not safe with them. So they think that's the way everybody behaves. A problem solved, shared, is half solved. It's not a doctrine, but it's a fact. Are you following what I'm saying here? Say it again, I need the gifts of men. There, see, listen, there are things that money, you don't need money to buy. If you spend money on everything, your character is bad. Quote me again. If you spend money on everything, your character is bad. Everything you want to do. There's no human being that can say, come on, you've been good to us, we'll do it for you. In fact, now people will say that, you must pay us before we start, because we know you. You must pay us. Forget about that, all this pastor, pastor you are doing. You must pay us. <laughs> How do you treat the gift of men? Do you understand that? Do you value people? Or you only value money? Are you aware that relationship is, is higher, other currency than money? And that's why I told you. Say somebody wants to do something. The church member, say, this is my bill, this is the amount. You'll be very broke. And yet you'll be the one paying. You must understand how to present what you do with giving the person a very reasonable impression that I value you. This is the amount I take. But considering how good you are to me, even if the person has not really been, how much do you have? Say this. Can we make it at this amount? First, you have sold an idea to the person that I value you. I value you. Even if the person may not come back, the person lives with one notion. This person loves me, and this person values me. How come we have people who are doing different things in church, but everybody see partners, external vendors? Everybody see, Abby? And yet there are people who are doing those things. Why? Lack of character. Inability to communicate with wisdom. Inability to magnet customers. Some of you are here, you are doing many things. We have introduced people on Sunday who are getting married. You do what they need on their wedding day. You have not gone to meet any one of them. And yet you keep malice for not coming to meet you. Who should meet who? Are you seeing what your bad esteem has done to you? Are you seeing how bad your, esteems are, your esteem is? You do what they need. You will not go and meet them. You are, you are not jovial. You are not fun to be with. You look like one want to kill people. You complain why you are Why won't you be broke? Who wants to give an assassin anything to do? That's what you look like. It looks like if they give you, you kill them. Laugh. Laugh with them and celebrate with them. And this, I can give you discount. Be fun to be with now. I make shoes. I make this. No. Too big and arrogant. Trust people. When I finish dropping the mic, I leave this place for you. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? 
This is what I do. JJ, meet people now after service. Hello, how are you doing? Good to see you. Wow. And do you know I make, I, I make beads? Do you know I make this? At least laugh with the person. No, I can't buy Neke. Is it my? Yamaje. Shegi. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? I've not come to joke. If we're going to walk in Domino, we must understand the way these things work. Now look at this. Uh, did you see, there's a story I forgot to share with you. When the cousin of Goliath came for events, do you read that? The guy came, the guy has six fingers. He was going to cut off the head of David. It was this same Abishai. That guy would have wasted David. It was Abishai that said no. He killed the guy with one, one swing of the sword. With, do you have people who can fight for you? Those who can defend you with their life and say, this person, no, this person has touched me. No, you can't do this person like this. No. I don't want to go into certain stories. Now, look at this. Did I show you 2 Samuel 21, verse 17? 2 Samuel 21, verse 17, quickly. I trust God to a hand by 745, so I just take benediction and release you. Because, I mean, this is the time I get to have with you, right? Good. Now look at it. Okay. Can you start from verse 16? Look at it. Whatever this guy's name is, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight, <laughs> I don't have the time. <laughs> the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight and being greeted with new sword. Look at it. Thought to have slain David. The guy came with the purpose to kill David. Look at verse 18 now. Verse 7. But Abishai, the son of Zuriah, so called him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swear to him, saying, Thou shalt no more go out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. So the light of Israel can be put out without men. Do you understand that? So that they will not kill the light of Israel. Don't go out with us again. We are going to die for you. Men, have you seen men who carry your matter? You are wondering, what have I even done to deserve this? Because they have been touched and imparted. They have been ministered to. They say these are our life. Everybody's wondering, why do you love this? Your pastor's brother so you, you can't understand. People complain about lack of men when they have no meaningful investment in anyone. You say, what I have is little. Share that little. It makes more mark. It makes more mark. Now look at this. Don't just ask for men. Consider these five things. Number one, whose man are you? I know you want people who are loyal, but who are you loyal to? Oh, God bless me. With the, who is excited and can boldly say, even with my eyes closed, this person with me. Do you know? Do you know that this thing we do called ministry, we are doing these things because of very few individuals we can depend on. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Very few individuals. There are people in church who use every opportunity to treat us that we are worthless. And yet we expect to be promoted in that same place. How? So we can die on time. So we can put things in your hands. And then you mess us up. They, they, they use every opportunity to, they have to show you that you are not who you think you are in our hands. And there are people who use every opportunity to prove you are important. We recognize your value. Who do you think we go for? People wonder the reason why there is no promotion at any point in life. Who are you? What do you display? What is your character like? Can we trust you? Or you are looking for a way to, to, to rob bishops? I'm telling you, it's a very wicked world, though. Even in church, people are, people, some people are very, very funny. How do you claim, how do you use every opportunity you have to dishonor a man? And yet you claim God wants you to walk with him. How? And the man too will now be stupid. 
and now say he hates God as against your character. There are believers you can't sleep in the same room and close your eyes. They can kill you. They've been nursing offense. I'm telling you. They are not your men. Not everybody in church is your man. Is your man. Your men, they will, and listen, it is not about I'm new here. It's about the heart you came with. Can, can I, can I, can I safely say, join me in this prayer. This is it. We will not hear it everywhere. So you can't believe it. See what Apostle said. <laughs> John, whose man are you? Who is, who, is, who is excited that he has you in his life or in our life? Say, I'm a son, I'm a this. There are sons and there are sons. There are daughters and there are daughters. I, I just have to be very blunt with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes. I don't want to go even through the story. Somebody was showing me a girl, says, I said, go ahead. If you know you are destined to suffer, go. But don't say I didn't want you because when your misery starts, we will join you with prayer point. So now that you have not, go if you know that they have stopped praying for you at home and your destiny is suffering. Do you know what we hold men to tell them the whole truth? It is your fault if your character is bad. We have to tell men who you are. I'm your father, so I can tell you, this person, avoid, except your intercessors are dead. It doesn't matter if the person is praying 40 days. Characters has, has killed the person already. Forget about the whole 40 days. Will, will God now say because you fasted 40 days to kill one of his sons and give you? Or the son of his daughter's life and give you? Because you, are, you, are, you need a wife. So, and you are thinking the way you are thinking upside down. Anything that comes to your hand, you destroy it. God will now say, I honor your prayer. Now go and destroy my daughter's life. God forbid. You see, at some point, somebody must be very blunt with us like this. So you can understand that the reason why your life is where it is, is likely also men who know who you are. Are you anybody's man? Who is excited? That you are in their life. Who can trust you? Who can say that this challenge is much, but let's call him. He's a good friend. He's a good brother. He's a good sister. She's a good sister. And all that. Number two. Are you mature enough to, push, to put emotions aside and focus on, a, on the bigger picture when things are bad? Do you love to win argument or you love to win in life? Have you seen people that once there's an argument, they will expose every secret you have with them just to win the argument. And they expect you to come back trusting them. Are you mature, do you, are you mature enough to say, yes, I'm pained, I'm hungry, but I still recognize why I'm here? Or you want to live your life to prove a point that you can succeed where you don't have inheritance? Number three. How large is your heart? Because sometimes the people that God will use for you will also hurt you. Do you have a heart that is large to take it? Number four, do you consider the gifts of men a privilege or a right? When people go out of their way to help you, to bless you, to give to you, many believers, won't, they will not be able to say thank you. You have to remind them, did you see what I said? Say, ah, yes, I was just about to call you. My God. When people stake their life for you, defend you, and they're around you, and say, go, we are praying for you, do you consider it a privilege? Those who see it as a right, abuse it. You know, I think sometimes, and I look at my life, I, I mean, I'm blessed with men. I'm not aware of that. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed with men. And I look at it, and I say, man, these people will trust me enough. So, so one of the decisions of that is that I won't pamper the person. Because, you, you, I mean, if you trust me, you must not be spoiled now, true? Then number two, but this is actually a sacred trust. I owe it to God as against everything 
to see that these people finish well. Finish well. I was talking to one of my sons. I told him, I said, from this moment, it can never be a statement in your mouth that you don't have a job. You have. Follow me now. That's your job. So you don't have to think about rent for the rest of your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Sit down. I messaged two of my spiritual daughters today. Even if serving with me is all you do in your life, I swear, you can never be poor. I'm telling you. Even if you, nothing else, just serve you, is all you do. Do you know what has touched you to? I'm te- and you have people who use every opportunity to show you. We are worthless in our hands. You see, devil or what? You must be mature. You must be wise. You must be discreet. Pastor Wale is not here. His wife is here. I can never forget till I see God face to face. That in our lowest moment, this guy stood. And he never gave us any impression. We never felt we didn't have a car. And the wife would be there quietly. Just look, I said. One day I told my wife, I said, if God doesn't change your life, I'm not a man of God. Whose life have you touched? You want double portion on whose hand are you pouring water? Elijah followed Elijah beyond the sons of the prophets. Followed. There are sons of the prophets in church. They refer to those who are father by the same people that are your father. There are people that if you are father by the same man, you cannot be close to because they will teach you disregard. And let me say this. I've had to call people several times and say, the only way to follow me successfully, pull away from this person. This is the only, I have looked at you and I see that I must take you serious. If I must ever run so that you can have guided understanding, if not, they will mess you up and they will still be following. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? What is your relationship? Maintenance culture. How do you maintain relationship? Or you only send messages once in a while? And I'm, that's why I'm glad, Chef Jesus. There's no... See, there are people that have so touched you that anything that touched them touches you. If you have seen the way we receive ministers in this church and the preparation for meetings... Everybody that has come to me will tell us, my God, what do you guys do? This man has never collected a dime for those services. I'm telling you, just so you know, we just buy the raw material. He and the wife will be there with the team. You wonder, do you have a relationship bank account? An account that is an investment of your contribution to lives. You can cash in and out every time. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you have people that you have an investment with? Sometimes somebody called me one time and said, so so and so is having a birthday. We want to do a, a video for the person. Do a video for, for who? Video. Before you can see my video wishing anybody birthday, the person has touched my life. Do I know this person? Just once we've met, you say do a video. Is that how you do it here? Yeah? This person go and do rubbish tomorrow. They say, look, Apostle, Apostle is their, their friends. Ah. Do you know that it was my friend that called me? Come to Lagos. Or where, where you buy it? Come now. We they go see about tomorrow. It was my friend. He thought of no other person. He said, ah, I know him. Come on. People will open doors for you. Are you following what I'm teaching you here? Listen, sometimes the best gift of God in your life as men will come without form and identity. We must discern them. Make sure, one of the ways for your future to be guaranteed is for your life to be about a purpose bigger than you. Serve a purpose bigger than you with convictions. Do you know that there are people I have said, sir, 
before these people can fail, it must be that I have failed and failed and failed and failed. They cannot. We are calling people now. I've called one of my sons. You are going to Kano. Because we are starting this way of light church, Kano. Yeah. He didn't say, I'll go and think about it. Yes, sir. From day one, he has said, God has said to follow you. You just think that everybody carries the same weight. Let's be, let's be honest. As we are saying that we are giving towards missions, there are people, they will look at you in the eye. They will never do it. And they will even find a way to let you know we are not doing it. <laughs> Very wickedness. Wicked. Wicked. <laughs> See, we, are not, we, are not, we don't really believe in you that much. What is you are saying? Now you say, if God's agenda will suffer without men, and you believe yours won't suffer without men, then you must be bigger than God. And there are systems in place to show you are not bigger than God. Can you permit me to wrap up the last one? Favor. Um, this is the fourth one, so I'm just going to stop at favor. All right? Favor is a two-dimensional force. Number one, you need favor with God and you need favor with men. Favor likely means goodwill. It is a two-dimensional force. It means goodwill. Let me say this to you before I begin on the sort of favor. Let me, let me beg you. It is to your own advantage that you let the people that God has placed you in their life as your lifters and the people God has placed you under their watch to know how much you honor them in words and deed. It is wisdom. Let me tell you what you don't know. I have people who follow me whose social medias I have muted. I don't want to ever see it because they find a way to say the opposite of everything I teach. If I teach A, they will go and put the opposite out just to let me know that they've read a textbook I've not read. And for me not to be offended, you are a son, but I won't see you. The danger of that is that when the enemy comes, I won't see it. They, 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 they misconstrued they, you see, there are people who don't have issue with going right until you say go right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Once you say go right, that, they now say, ah, I'm not going right, it's left. It's the spirit of a goat. And meanwhile, these are the people who need help the most. Don't copy rebellious people. It is not everybody in church you can copy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Favor is a two-dimensional force. You need good will with men and good will with God. There is a science of favor. You can walk your way into favor. There's a way it works. The Bible said good understanding brings favor, but the will of a transgressor is hard. Favor has a science. It can be learned. There is something you will know. You will be favored every time. Everybody wants to do you good. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has a science. You can understand the science. And doors will always open for you. People will go out of their way to help you. There's a science of favor. I have one of my boys in the UK. Very strange boy. <sighs> one time I called him. I said, oh boy, there's nothing you can do to offend me. You shall open bonsha. You are just wise. There are people who just look at you, you are just wise. And people who look at you, they are just foolish. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Sit down. Use your head. Somebody needs to tell you at some point. If not, you'll be wondering why you are going down. Somebody needs to tell you. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is why this is my last. I'm <laughs> to that. <laughs> as I finish. <laughs> Listen. In every organization, there are principles that guarantee consistent liftings. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you lack ethics and wisdom for human relationships, you will never rise in any establishment. If you lack ethics and wisdom for human relationship, you are in a system, but you don't know how to relate with the head. <laughs> you always have head on collision. And somehow you are trusting for... See, they will not promote you even when it is your right to be promoted. You will spend years to go and fight for it, and later they will say, okay, one level. Meanwhile, just normal good character would have promoted you. So I can't bend to anybody. I can't bend. Then you stay there. 
There are gatekeepers you must bend to to pass in every system. And it's, it's, not, it's part of good character to learn to bend. We, we need to teach this wisdom in church. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen, true riches is having access to the heart of men. Write it down. True riches is having access to the heart of men. True riches is having access to the heart of men. True riches is having access to the heart of men. If not for time, I really wanted to pray that God will activate these things in every life, but time is gone. True riches is having access to the heart of men. To walk in favor, you can't be angry anyhow. Write it down. To walk in favor, you can't be angry anyhow. You can't be angry anyhow. You pocket your anger. Without wisdom, you can't walk in favor. Without humility, you can't walk in favor for long. Without wisdom, you can't walk in favor. Humility is wisdom in the corridor of power. Humility is wisdom. Look at Nigeria's political scene. <clears throat> there are people that will just determine that you will not be a relevant politician for life. And that's it. Even local government chairman, you can't win again. They've finished you there. You need humility. To walk in. Some things may start in your life. You can't tell how they came. Without humility, are you following what I'm saying? You will just see them live your life. You just observe that money has developed wings and, and, and gotten out of your life. Look at this. All right? Whenever you are relating with men, are you following what I'm saying here? Always put a, put a relationship above money. Put a relationship above money. Choose to relate with them than just get money from them. Choose, put relationships above money. Now, I wrote down a story here. <laughs> All right, and it's a very funny story. It's the story of the guy who designed the Apple logo. Have you seen that story before? The guy who designed the Apple logo. When they were going to pay him, they asked him, should we pay you money or give you a stake in this company? Guess what he chose? Money. Pay me my money, let me go. Even if it was 1% stake, his generation can never be poor for life. Are you seeing how people make decisions that hurt them? It's just money I deal with. And check those who talk, the money they can never have. Because that's not the science of wealth. The science of wealth is men, relationship. Check now, the wealthy. Look at what happened. I don't want to go into this story because social media. Hotel Dollar and um, Elumelu. As they fought over the Transcorp Kini, they are still friends. So. This one is bucket of water. We'll never meet again. Nothing significant. Uh, you are wasting you are wasting your God-given opportunity because of this anger. Listen to what I'm saying. You must have people in your life that I can't be angry with you. So you tell your friend, I'm wiser than this. <laughs> so I will even beg you. And it's wisdom. And it's wisdom. And you don't know why you keep walking in favor with them. I'm telling you. Me, when it comes to fathering people, the way people can have unhindered access to me is when I see the way they treat my rebuke. Some will show me that they are in the street. They will not message you for like two months. Me, that I'm even busy. And some will reach out and thank you for correcting me. You know that they value you in every angle. Say, I'll take you serious. Who has vowed not to take you serious because you are not wise? We need this wisdom in church. I said we need this wisdom in church. Now, look at this. I said to you, without humility, you can never walk in favor for long. God has brought you by privilege into certain associations and relationships. Don't mess it up with foolishness. Don't mess it up. God gave you friends, gave you people. Do this together. You, 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 you leave me alone. You, you, what are you doing? Everyone that lives your life in pain, do you know what is living? I gave you golden principles this morning. Never forget them. Never bite the hands that fed you. Never, no matter what they do around okay, here, find a way to pay good with good. Never get to the point that you only have evil things to say about those that have God has used for you. And that's what happened. People will narrow their gaze and forget all the good things. And say, don't mind him, he's a bad man. Is this. Has this person never been good to you? Say, eh, eh, God, use him once. A 
in a world where your replacement is everywhere, it is wisdom to be humble. Write it in capital letter. In a world where your replacement is everywhere, it is wisdom to be humble. Let me say this to you emphatically. When you are in a system where your leader can depend on you with their lives, you can never be poor. Write it in capital letter. When you are in a system where your leader can depend on you. See, we don't have the scarcity of gifted men at the top. You have the scarcity of dependable men. Every man seeks for the things of their own. But a faithful man, who can find? People can wake up tomorrow and tear their ordination certificate. I say, why did he ordain me? Did I send him? One time like that, I, I, I sat down in church. And I, my phone began to vibrate. And, I, and I, I started getting notification. Someone deleted message. Somebody was asking me questions from years back. Asking me questions. Opposed to how can I do this? How can I learn this? Teach me this. DM. He got offended. On Sunday morning. Also a pastor. And I began to see he deleted his own part. Now left my own part. I shook my head. I said, this anger will finish. When it finishes, we will not talk about it. I can wait five years. Just enjoy yourself. Vent all the foolishness. We are waiting with forgiveness. You see, one thing you can never take from me is my ability to forgive. It doesn't matter the time. I am condemned to that part. I may cry, <laughs> but there's nothing I can do. I've been forgiving much, but it doesn't mean you are not hurting yourself and taking yourself miles back. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? I think somehow we have spoiled ourselves with the idea of closing by 7.30. Somehow. Listen to this. This is a world of men. If you don't know your way around men, all right, you will drop. It is just a matter of time. You must understand the science, the heart, the wisdom. Honor is a currency when it comes to favor. Honor is a currency. And I have this to say to you. Be rich in men. Be rich in men. I ask you, what's your, what's your relationship maintenance culture? Do you have people that you periodically just send messages to appreciate? Just want to thank you for all you're doing. I met one of my friends today just thanking him. Thank you for being a good friend to me. A good brother. You have made my stay in Abuja memorable. You've been there for me. And he replied, he said, thank you for trusting me. I said, correct. Correct. Sometimes they are waiting for you to be appreci to appreciate, but you just won't. So I've said it once, that's it. It's not wisdom. See, you can't be in everybody's good book, but it is also foolishness to be in everybody's bad book. Everybody has something wrong to say about you. We must begin to deal with character issues that is limiting people beyond village people. Sometimes people are innocent. This person's character is enough to finish him in 12 lifetimes. If you die and wake up again, the character will still say, where we stop from? It is loaded enough to finish the person. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you saying in this church now, nobody has contact that can save somebody's life? Why can't they recommend you? Everybody is afraid. The last person they recommended you to, what the suit you made for the person, they started to cover their body at night. It became duvet. <laughs> you now look and say that, I know my tomorrow will be all right. Tomorrow of making um, pajamas or what? You turn suit to pajamas. You say, tomorrow will be all right. Tomorrow call. Next year, me. Even your angels are saying, I'm not there. <laughs> You know, one of the things I found out, sometimes we go to campuses to hold meetings, and the very same fellowships who have been trying to say, we have been trying to bring you apostle, they will not begin to stress my people. To them, because we are not the ones that are bringing him. We are not the ones bringing him. So they will stress them. And I hear all those feedback. I just shake my head. You guys are not wise. When you are done with campus fellowship president, all these shoulders, you will meet us in town. You are the ones that are coming to meet. We have been campus fellowship president 13 years ago. 
13 years ago. <laughs> Somebody now, you see, we're just waking up and we're just coming around the crib. 13 years ago, I've led JCCF. 13 years ago. Somebody is on campus, you are rude to every minister that comes. You, are, you, are, you talk to them because they made you an executive. When you come out, all those evil will now start haunting you back. You just notice that the door of access is not opening around any further. Why is that? Many of these anointed guys don't find their way outside. Because they've been too arrogant on campus, they can't start again. We must wake up. We must wake up. We must wake up. We're going somewhere, they treated my people so bad, and I'm saying, hey, Apostle, come and bless us. <laughs> you will graduate and live here before we honor this invite. <laughs> so I'll pray you'll say amen. With this evil you have done to us, <laughs> I forgive you, but just get out of my sight. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? Be wise. Be wise. Pride, arrogance, foolishness does not bring anybody anything. It has no economic value. It makes people wretched. Be wise. You cannot be too humble. Do you understand what I'm saying? Be wise. You can't get it wrong with humility. You can't get it wrong with honor. These things, you can't get it wrong. Don't stop sizing men up to know how to treat them. Some of the people's network is bigger than their looks. Be wise. Honor people. And girls, even if you are not dating the guy, don't finish him. The friend may be the person you marry. But the, way, the friends that will now come for you are the ones who console and beg him for the injury you have caused. You now say you are waiting for yes. You who? You know about read story. See, <laughs> I'm telling you, see, some of, sometimes these things are character problems. Girls in church, if they are not dating you or they are not dating you again, they will, they will pound you and pound, go and die and drink poison. No, now. If relationship can work, friendship can work. At least we'll meet somewhere in life. Let's treat each other well. Check your phone now. Many of you have blocked your helpers. Either on WhatsApp or on Facebook. You, you blocked them. Why? They said hi. Say, how can, how can, how can they say hi? You didn't even ask. Eh? The prayer you are praying is in your block list. Too. Go and unblock. See, some people say, how, 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 how can a guy be chatting about on social media? Can, can, can God be my husband on social media? I met my wife on Telegram. Telegram. Oh, are you, okay, you are a farmer. You have planted your own husband or wife somewhere. <laughs> that somebody said that you must meet them in the program. Are they not human? Are they not on Facebook? If they see you there, that you are fine. Though the picture is AI. But they see that. <laughs> Sorry. At least they have seen that you are fine. And let wait. Let me warn you. Let me warn as I close. That's why I said I need to finish this walk and run away. Let me say something. Though. There are AI I'm seeing now that I'm comparing them with the real. I said this is fraud. I was telling those my boys in Abuja, they are looking at the screen now and said they will go and carry witness evidence. Two of them will go and do a high that has six packs. Say, look at your stomach. If you want six packs, start Jimmy. They are Jimmy would be a bar. <laughs> they are go and carry weight and say evidence. <laughs> if you want it, look like it. So that AI will not be lying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Have you learned something tonight? You see, if you can master this principle, gate will open to you and doors in places you are not even knocking. Help him. You are, you'll just be wondering, how did you enter a phase where everything is just working? I'm telling you, wisdom is an enabler. It opens doors. You can provoke blessings you are not looking for. I'm telling you. Somebody, do you know that people who have the weight of the release you need? But if it is provoked in a way, ah, one of my daughters came to me and said, I brought you a book. Come and pray for me for the spirit of wisdom. I said, nonsense. Go on fast. A book, spirit of wisdom. Lie, lie. Like, it doesn't work like that. As I got home and I opened the book, 
it was the exact book I need for this phase of my life. I said, my God, I can't wait to see this girl. I, if she will not carry it, maybe God didn't call me. Being doing the right thing at the right time. Being precise. Wisdom. Pronouncement can open your door for life. Do you know how long I struggled with relationship? Who did I honor? My spiritual mother. If I be a woman of God, I open the door of marriage for you. Pa! The same week my wife came. Doors can be opened to honor. You are being blessed, you can be more blessed. You are seeing something you can see more. I want to activate something tonight. And I want you in the next one minute, lift your voice and ask God, help me in all the ways I've been foolish. Give me the spirit of wisdom. My life must change. My life must change. My life must change. I am tired of being foolish. I am tired of being ignorant. I submit to the protocols of wisdom. I submit to your counsel. Can you please pray? You know the areas where you were missing it. Come on. You can make amends. You can make amends. And it will look like you never made mistakes before. You can recover all. You can repent. You can make good amends. You can be back on track. You can recover what you have lost. If only you will cry. Help me. Help me. In all the areas I've missed it. If only you will cry. Help me. Jesus. Thou son of David. Cry to him. Cry to him. In Jesus' name we are prayed. This teaching tonight is not a way to call out your sins, but to show you where you might have been missing it. If you can humble yourself and cry, it will heal your land. It will give you a brand new beginning. Nobody will ever trace foolishness to you. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Never live your life defending arrogance and defending what is wrong. Never. Be wise. Be discreet. Be full of wisdom. Be wise. Be wise, beloved. Pride doesn't pay anybody. Arrogance has not helped anyone. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. I've come to beg you in the name of Jesus. Your journey will be faster and testimony. You, you'll be surprised at how these systems work. One of my, one of a pastor called me. He said, Apostle, he came for a meeting. He said, anybody you need to reach in the body of Christ that you can't reach, call me. He saw that these people, they would treat the person well. I can stake my life. To this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But I can tell you some of the treatment we get when we go out there. I can, I'm not even going to teach about that. So people will not be offended. I say, you don't even have an idea of who you are bringing. We are servants of God. That's why at this point I pray to God to bless me, to afford... You don't have to, lodge. in fact, we are changing our principles next year. You are inviting me. Don't lodge me in any hotel. I will lodge myself. I'm not out for no area. I'm out to be a blessing. Just so you know. Don't, don't worry. I have my team anywhere. Portacourt, Lagos. I will lodge myself. All right? And then we, yes. Yes, because we see that things are, people are not taught. People are not taught. I want to pray that something will be provoked tonight. In all the ways that the tide has turned against you. Because of genuine acknowledgement, repentance, and submission to God today, I stand as a prophet and command that the doors that shut against you be opened again. Yeah. Say that amen loud and clear. Yeah. The doors that shut against you be opened again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I activate favor. Today, be blessed with the gift of men. Men like horses. We will not stop carrying you till you get to your destination. Receive the gifts of men. Wealth will not be scarce in your hands. Your understanding is open to wealth. You know what to do. Receive excellent spirit. Receive excellent spirit. Receive excellent spirit in the name of Jesus.
from this moment walk in favor. Forever walk upon gold. All of you who have been in different critical positions financially, through this teaching, as you go back and listen again, God begins to give you insight into what to do well and what to do better. You are not confused. Your mighty men will not be against you. Your men of valor will not turn against you. In the name of Jesus, if there's anyone under this sermon who has wandered away from destiny out of offense, go back. No, it's not a prayer. Go back. Humble yourself. It is better to look like a fool now and save the future than to look wise now and then lose the future. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. A man of humility is indispensable. It's indispensable. I decree. Receive grace. Receive grace. In the name of Jesus. Now I decree from today going forward, you will never know a better yesterday. You walk in complete dominion. The grace and the enablement to be faithful, receive it. I ask that the eyes are flooded with light. When next I come to Ibadan, your testimony will be unbelievable. It will shock you what God will do through your life. In the name of Jesus, it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Give the Lord a big, big hand. Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time arms. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience.